How does the Maryland State Department of Agriculture connect Maryland farmers to local school systems? Next on Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Jody Ritzy, the host for Food for Thought, and thanks for watching. Today I'm joined by Karen Fedor from the Maryland State Department of Agriculture. She's no stranger to us in Anne Arundel County. She's worked with us on many programs and many initiatives. Welcome, Karen, to Food for Thought. Thank you, Jody. I'm so happy to be here today. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Um, we know you're from the Maryland State Department of Agriculture, but tell them a little bit about yourself and what your role is at um, the State Department of Agriculture. Sure. Well, I've been with the Maryland Department of Agriculture for the past 10 years. I'll be celebrating my 10th anniversary at the end of the year. And I've had a great opportunity to go out into our farmland and to experience the different farming operations that we have in Maryland. For example, I started off in, uh, with the organic certification program, and then I moved over to the marketing program. I've worked with our farm wineries. I've worked with our organic operations. I have a chance to work with our cheese producers, our specialty crop producers, which include Christmas trees of all uh -huh. things, and our maple syrup producers, our honey producers, and then of course my love, especially crop, the fruit and vegetable folks. I love going out to the farms to our fruit and vegetables producers that we have in the state and just to see what they're doing. We have a plethora of fruit and vegetable folks in, throughout the state, and I'm so happy to be able to go out there and experience what they're doing. Wow, so just there, I mean you talked about so many different um, food items and food groups, and it's so vast. It's so um, relevant in the state of Maryland. Exactly, and not a lot of people think that way because when you think of Maryland, they don't think about agriculture. And so number one producer industry in the state, and we do have a vast array of agriculture productions. Um, as I said, you know, I do work a lot with fruits and vegetables, but we also have the chickens, poultry, and we also have beef, and then eggs, and so we do have quite the variety of agriculture in Maryland. Wow. Now, it's so interesting because I think with the Maryland State Department of Agriculture, and you're really right around the corner from us, so uh, we yeah, love the proximity and we are, are, we're basically neighbors. Um, but what I love is you are also a parent. I am a parent. My and daughter. I think that's so important for viewers to watch. Um, likewise, I am. So I think each and every day, the work that I do and how I look at the menu and I still create the menu, I just have to look that not only did I serve two children of my own, I served 79,000 plus children. Exactly. So I think, tell me a little bit about your family and um, having a daughter, how does that um, impact the work you do as well as the connection with Anne Arundel County? Oh, exactly. So my daughter, she does go to Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Uh, she is in the elementary school here within Anne Arundel. And to tell you the truth, every day when I look at that school menu, I also feel the same thing as you do because I want to know what what is she eating on the school lunch menu and what local products can I help you come bring to the school system. So I have that equally passion. My passion within the Department of Agriculture is the Maryland Farm to School program. And so that's why I go out every day and talk to our farmers to see what's what, what they're producing and how can I get that local product into the school meals, not only for Anne Arundel but also throughout the state because I am equally um, passionate to make sure that I can get the freshest, nutritious product into the school lunch systems. Now, it's interesting that you say around the state. I know what we do in Anne Arundel, and I think we're going to spend the second part of the show mm -hmm. really specifically on Anne Arundel. But why do we have homegrown uh, school lunch week, mm -hmm. and when did that start for a viewer watching? I know what we do here, but let's mm -hmm. look at it f across the state sure. of Maryland. Why is it? Mm -hmm. what it is today in Maryland. Yeah, so we had legislation which was passed in 2008, Governor O'Malley signed it, and which, was, which created the Jane Lawton Farm to School program. And so within the program itself, the state law, it said we want to buy, you know, we're encouraging school systems to buy local product, Maryland product, for school lunches and also to educate the children about where they comes from. You know, so oftentimes when I'm traveling throughout the state, you know, what we're seeing is children are disconnected from the farm and they don't know where the food is coming from. They don't know how it's grown. And so this is just a little way to say, we have these items on the menu and guess what? It came from our backyard in the state of Maryland. And you know what? And do you know how it's grown? Because a lot of times, you know, they go to the grocery store and they think an apple is just there. They don't realize that it came from a tree. 
you know, and the squash or the lettuce, you know, they don't know where it came from the ground or that it takes a person to produce that. And so through the Maryland Farm to School program, we just the little way of trying to make that connection of how the food is grown and then to have the kids experience it, you know, on the school lunch line. And I love being in the education business that you do. You tie in that education and the curriculum piece. So not mm -hmm. only can we talk about it in the school lunch line, right. um, we're hoping teachers talk about it as part of curriculum. We could talk about it in math, and they can be counting oh. how many apples mm -hmm. um, were grown on the tree. And you can combine trees. You can combine colors of trees and right. colors of apples. So the, uh, the opportunity to really educate our kids on the big picture of it all, I think, is really priceless. Oh, it is. And there's so many connections. Well, people don't realize how many connections you can make, especially within the curriculum that it has with food production and agriculture. As you've mentioned, you know, how many apples are on the trees, but in the, and, and with the chemistry and the biology mm -hmm. of growing the plant and looking how, and how does it grow and does it, is it affected by different weather conditions or fertilizers or sunlight and there's so many things you can do with the education part and the curriculum about growing our own food. Now one thing that I really want to commend the Maryland State Department of Agriculture, the, the poster that you brought in today is mm -hmm. the local poster um, right. and I just think you know whomever created it, uh, hats <laughs> off to them. It is yeah. priceless to show a book and to show all of those beautiful fruits and vegetables. I mean, the tie-in in mm -hmm. and the local farm message, it says local Maryland farmers with curriculum, with healthy eating, mm -hmm. with growing, uh, you know, academic achievement right. for our student base is just really fantastic. Now, how do those posters, I mean, you do a lot mm -hmm. for this for the state of Maryland. You know, tell everybody watching, like, how do we communicate to all the local districts? Um, what is the message? What do the messages look like? Right. So we have, um, with the poster, thank you, by the way, I, we put a lot of thought into that poster to make sure um, it conveyed the right message. Because it did. <laughs> it's perfect. That's great. <laughs> thank you. So we, um, we distribute the poster to all the food service directors throughout the state because we see the food service directors within the school systems as our conduit of information to get out to the school system. You're, you're there. You know what's going on. You're working with the farmers. You're working with the distributors. We, we're dependent upon you to get the information out because you're there and you know what's going on. So we distribute the, um, the sign uh, to the food service directors and also if there's some farmers, you know, because um, with the farm to school program it just varies from school system to school system and how it's implemented. So if the school system is buying direct from the farmers, and then we'll also go out to the farms and we'll give it to the farmers. So they could display on their farm stand, um, if they have a farm stand, that, that you know, and it's a source of pride for them. Wow. They love being able to say, hey, I sell to the school system. And that's fantastic for them because they can, in that community, I know I don't think that's happening here in Anne Arundel, but that's a huge commitment on the farmer's part and the school system and really just shows that mm -hmm. collaboration between both parties. Exactly. You know, and each school system is different because there's just different degrees on how it's implemented. And that's the beauty of the program. We said it's a volunteer program, but we said it's up to you. You know, it's up to the food service directors on how they want to implement it. And so it just, you know, some school systems will buy direct because they can. They are sc smaller school systems versus the larger school systems such as Anne Arundel, Montgomery County, Prince George's. They go through distributors, and w which is perfectly fine. You know, as all as we're seeing is as long as the local products gets into the school lunches. So let's share with the viewers a little bit about that because I think um, I want to, you know, send my hats off too to all the fellow directors like myself. I think as a state we do just a bang up job. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all collaborate. We all say, you know, what are you going to put on the menu this year? Do you have peaches? Do you have apples? Um, and we compare notes. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the success stories? I think I know quite a few of them, but just to share because I think it is so much bigger than just Anna Rundle. So somebody watching um, should know of the great work that goes in Harford or mm -hmm. Washington County. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a few of the sure. success stories from other counties? Because yeah. I think we should highlight the great work that's throughout the state. Oh, yeah. It's amazing what the food service directors are doing throughout the state. And some of them have just really embraced this whole farm to school idea. Um, and so, like, for example, in Washington County, because they will buy, they do both um, buy and direct from the farmer and then also through a distributor. And then what they also do is they um, experiment with local proteins. And so they are buying uh, local beef, of course, Ground beef is a little bit cheaper out there than I found out than it is down here um, for, yeah, considerably cheaper just because of land prices the way they are. So um, they also do a lot of fruits and vegetables, and then they're doing local proteins. For example, they bought 
uh, cheese from a local farmer for Chesapeake cheddar, and so they're making a macaroni and cheese with their cheddar. Over in Hartford County, they mostly work with fruits and vegetable producers, but what they end up doing is they realize their distribution uh, was a kind of a challenge because they go hyper-local. So they want to buy only within the county, and they can. Just because the proportion of the school the students and the meals and the amount of farming, uh, they, there's a lot more farmers in Hartford County than it is, for example, in Anne Arundel. But then again, the distributors, they're, they, they're acting like a distribution system. So they end up writing a grant to get a walk-in cooler. And so then the farmers, what they'll do is they have a cachet of about 10 farmers. And so the farmers will deliver to the school system on a weekly basis when it's in season. And then the school system will distribute it out to its schools. And so these are whole fruits and vegetables that they do. And then what they also do is they meet with the farmers um, in the beginning of the growing season to find out what they're going to be growing and then try to organize their, their, menu. their menu around yeah. what they're going to be, going to be growing. Or, and then also the farmers could say, well, you know, if the school system says, I want some more lettuce or something like that, and then the farmers will see if they can also grow it. Over on the eastern shore, um, what they're trying to do then is actually do some more scratch cooking of local product over in Caroline County. And so they're making soups uh, with fresh local product. And then there's, wow. they also want to do some dehydration too. And I think there's, has there been some local fish? Yes, there thank you for reminding me. Yes, mm -hmm. so uh, during Maryland Homegrown School Lunch Week, uh -huh. our Farm to School Week, which is in September, what some of the school systems will do over there, uh, they've tried bison burgers. Mm -hmm. And they've also, this year they did Maryland crab. Caroline County did Maryland crab soup, which was really great. They, they did a taste testing of, uh, so what they did there was the school systems, there's only nine schools, and so all the cafeteria staff got together with each of the nine schools to create their own version of Maryland crab soup. And then there was a competition among the school staff, uh, cafeteria staff for Maryland crab soup. Isn't that a great idea? It so they is. really, they had the buy-in at the school as well as at the county level. Exactly. And to really showcase, again, something that we haven't here. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, my hats go off to them. I think it's great that you could really show all of it. Does anybody do... Um, uh, like any like there's no juices or anything right not or yet is there any there no. is cheese we talked there's about the cheese, cheese and the and protein beef. yeah um, oh and then also there was sampling of oysters last year oh. there was a taste testing and that was phenomenal because here this was over in Dorchester and it's very you know it's a very waterman type mm -hmm. community yet you know the kids never the students never experienced the oysters and so they donated oysters, 200 oysters were donated from an aquaculture farm, which was awesome. And then they baked them there on site. Is that, I was going to ask how they prepared them. Yeah. So they just baked them with some... Uh, they just baked them and then they offered the students um, horseradish and um, cocktail sauce. Cocktail sauce. Wow. And it was amazing. You know, and of course you have to worry, you know, there's allergies, you know, the whole sure. allergen thing. Um, but it was, you know, those students that they, you know, if they had allergies, they didn't participate. And, it was amazing. We had line all the way lines around the cafeteria because the students wanted to taste the oysters. Yeah. Now, were the um, teachers, because we always use our teachers here mm -hmm. and our administrators as the role models and to really um, set the stage for us and to participate with the meals mm -hmm. and participate with our tastings when we do the tastings mm -hmm. of the greens or right, the rainbow. Right. Um, did they participate with the oyster tasting? Uh, some did. Some, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder how they were with that. Either they probably were right in the front, right, saying, right, right, you right. know, cheering the, the students mm -hmm. on, or probably, oh, I'm not really ready to go there. Yeah, th that's exactly what it was. And then, then you had some of the students who were just spearheading the whole thing, and they came back for seconds and thirds. <laughs> that's great. Now, in the, the week has always been in September. Mm -hmm. I think that's been um, right since the kickoff, the original right. kickoff, right? which was, you know, the second year it was held in Anne Arundel County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. can remember that day, and we had uh, tractors, we had yes. the farm, we had our superintendent, and again, uh, our Horse connection shopping. of having the farmer with mm -hmm. the student in the classroom, um, we thought was priceless. It, it was. really connected everyone, and it allowed the students to see where their food is grown from. Right, right. Yes, that, that day was amazing, because I, I remember the corn shucking, and also the, all the, the the whole school was engaged with the readings and the activities I was involved. It was great. And do you remember they had all the um, writings, too, that yeah, were all uh, exactly. posted, so they drew pictures and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that's great information on the state level. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take a break, Karen, and then okay. when we come back, we're going to talk about um, Anne Arundel County specifically. Okay. I think there's a lot of things that we have um, going on. We're also going to talk about uh, uh, barbecue that is held every year, and that is awesome. a statewide event, but I think it's really important for the viewers to okay. hear. Excellent.
Don't go away. We'll be right back with Karen Fedor from the Maryland State Department of Agriculture. Hi, I'm Jeannie Porter. Anne Arundel County Public Schools Department of Transportation is raising the level of awareness for the safety of your children as we transport them to and from school. When a school bus stops to load students, as a driver, this is what you will see. At 150 feet, the bus will activate hazard lights. At 100 feet, the bus driver will activate the amber lights. They will start slowing down. At 10 feet before the bus stops, they will turn on the red bus lights. Their stop sign will come out and students will begin to load. Once all students are on board safely, the bus driver will turn off red lights and move forward. At this time, it is safe for the motorist to resume movement. Welcome back and thanks for staying tuned to Food for Thought. Karen Fedor from the Maryland State Department of Agriculture is here today to talk about all the great initiatives from the state and now we're going to talk a little bit about Anne Arundel County. Karen, we had so much good discussion about mm -hmm. just what you do for the state and what the Maryland State Department of Agriculture does for all of the local school systems and all the food service directors like mm -hmm. myself. Um, I would love to talk now about Anne Arundel County. I sure. often hear from parents, um, they don't know about our fruits and vegetables. They don't know about all the great work we do. Mm -hmm. So could we talk a little bit, if you're in one of our schools, um, just for a viewer, mm -hmm. what would you see if you popped in any one of our schools on any day of the week <laughs> when we look at fruits and vegetables? Right, because right. I'll be the first to say in Anne Arundel County, we really don't look at local proteins or bison burgers mm -hmm. um, or oysters or any mm -hmm. of those things we talked about. We really have kept all of our focus mm -hmm. on fruits and vegetables. Which is great. But if you could share, just I know you're an outside partner of mm -hmm. ours, but you're definitely in the schools and you're sometimes in the schools and I don't even know you're in the schools. <laughs> So sure. give, them, give them a snapshot of what it might look like. Sure. So my daughter does go to Anne Arundel County Schools, and so sometimes I try to pop in and have lunch with her just because I enjoy having lunch with my daughter. And yes, because I'm in the Farm to School program, I'm always curious to see what's going on in the cafeteria line. And to, t and to tell you the truth, I'm amazed at the plethora of fruits and vegetables I see. And knowing that the children can take as much as they want which is outstanding. That's unheard of. Because some schools I've gone to and you know, you'll see you'll see fruits and vegetables not displayed as well as they could be, but that's, you know, because things are busy in the cafeteria line, but when I go into the school systems, I'm just hats off to your staff and what your staff is trying to do and to make that appealing so the children want to take those fruits and vegetables. And that's just key because if it looks great, they'll want to take it. And the I, the items that I see on the school lunch line, they they look great. And I think it's always, um, we're so um, a, attentive to colorful. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the samples that you brought today <laughs> is just you. a perfect example. Um, mm -hmm. So we just really, we just feel that the students come in, they may not have, and we talked about it, they maybe never saw cauliflower right. before. So what better way to showcase it, to have it be full and plentiful and colorful. And then we've tied in tasting. So we do a tasting of the rainbow, which is the mm -hmm. first Friday of every month. It's a right. new fruit or vegetable. We mm -hmm. have done asparagus. We've done roasted Brussels sprouts. We do acorn squash. We have done so many different things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times parents will say, I'm, I don't know. You know, my daughter, son, they don't eat those things. Right. And it's amazing. It when you is. do it in school lunch and it's out there, little by little, mm -hmm. they keep taking it. And that's what we're seeing. We're really noticing um, more and more students accept it. More and more students are asking for it. And just like you said, for a parent watching today, mm -hmm. Your daughter or son can come through, and if they say there was no fruits or vegetables, right. I think you need to ask them exactly which but ones were there and what did you choose. Right, exactly, because I know my daughter does buy school lunch on a regular basis, and I'm always asking her, so what did you eat today, mm -hmm. and what kind of fruits and vegetables did you get, and I'm always looking at the school menu, too, to see, okay, so what, what is Jody serving, you know, right. what kind of fruits and vegetables are you serving, and I see the ro roasted squash and the roasted Brussels sprouts, and hats off to you for trying right. that. It's it's going very well. I mean, again, it was a little slow at the beginning, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's more popular in one school than the other. But one thing that we do, and I think, um, you know, Dr. Arlotto uh, being our superintendent mm -hmm. and just leading the charge for mm -hmm. us, when we do it, it's in all of our schools. You could go to Cape right. St. Clair where your daughter goes. You can go mm -hmm. to North County High School. You could be at Hilltop, or you could go all the exactly. way down to Southern. 
they all offer the same great fruits and vegetables exactly. so it's really um, we think we're just cultivating communities of wellness mm -hmm. through the items that we get to offer oh, because definitely. I hope your daughter goes home and says mom today I tried kiwi or today mm -hmm. I tried and I know your daughter probably tried all of them but we really would love not that all dialogue. The time. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. <laughs> we would love for them to go home and say, Mom right. and Dad, could we buy this? Could we try this? Mm -hmm. Or if they say it to their aunt and their uncle exactly. and their grandmother and their grandfather. Um, we have such a big impact, we think, on the community at large then, not mm -hmm. only just on our students in Anne Arundel County. Oh, definitely. And, you know, and we, you know, that, that's why we see the school system as such a critical partnership because you are not only local, but you are exposing the children to the various fruits and vegetables. And so if they can go into that grocery store too, you know, take their parents into the grocery store or even the farmer's markets and say, hey, this is what I tried today in school. I mean, it's a huge impact mm -hmm. for everybody. And your whole idea of community of wellness, cultivating community of wellness, that's key. Yeah. That's we, key. we think so too. We just think it's made such a difference for us and mm -hmm. what we do. Um, our staff, like you said, uh, hands down, I think mm -hmm. I have the best staff in the world. Um, I can go in any school at any time. The displays are beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. They just, they're passionate about what they do and they care so much about each and every child and it's evident with each and every day with what they serve, mm -hmm. um, what they eat. Um, we talked about it a little bit mm -hmm. before the show. Um, a few years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, we would spend $200,000 a year on produce, which is really small in our budget because it's millions. It's mm -hmm. 25 to $26 million. Mm -hmm. We spent over a million dollars wow. in just fruits and vegetables. That's amazing. So it's, it's mm -hmm. so good to see them take it on their plate, mm -hmm. to eat it, mm -hmm. they consume it, they ask for more. Mm -hmm. um, it really, it makes each and every day um, so important to us and we know the difference we've made not only right. for that person and their health or the student and their health, academic achievement as well. Oh yeah, of course. That's now right. when we look, um, being Maryland farmers, we're always key. How do we find more Maryland mm -hmm. farmers? How do you and I coordinate our efforts? Right. Because um, you're the connection to that local farmer and Maryland farmers are mm -hmm. so important to us. Mm -hmm. Um, our radius, and for someone watching, we say we're going to look for a local farmer within 150 mm -hmm. miles. Okay. Um, how do you think that um, falls in line with maybe a retail operation, or how do you define local? Is 150 miles pretty good for a viewer watching? <laughs> how we actually, there's a state law for for defining local within Maryland. So what we ask is there was state law that was passed is if you're going to call it local, we ask uh, for the state of origin. So then if uh, what we had found out with some of the grocery store chains is what they were calling local was coming from Florida, and to them it is because it's a day's drive. Oh, so the miles do make quite a big they difference. They do make a difference. And so what we ask, that the law that was passed saying if you're going to call it local, then at least identify the state of origin. So then it's the consumer, like in the grocery store, for example, or the farmer's market, it's the consumer that can decide whether or not it's local enough for them. Okay. So then, um, you know, if they want to buy a Georgia peach, that's fine because their peaches and watermelons, obviously, because of how the season is, they'll be coming up sooner than Maryland's will be. So then it's up to the consumer to decide whether or not they want to purchase the product. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm thrilled. I learned that today. <laughs> cool. And I, you know, I'm happy to say to our viewers that we really look at 150 miles. Right. So we, we just wanted to say, and we put this in our bid. So mm -hmm. we bid all of our produce. So we spec what kind of apples, what color apples, peaches, mm -hmm. pears, plums, cauliflower, broccoli, right. you name it. It's everything is out there. I just imagine what that bid looks like. It's rather big. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then That's we have work. distribution centers like you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we might meet with local farmers and we have. So, right, have. and I know you've, um, you've helped us make those connections, mm -hmm. but um, I know myself, I've been at many different local farmers in mm -hmm. all Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to go out, we're able to see the crops, right. we're able to see them being picked mm -hmm. um, and harvest um, at harvest time, and then we've actually even gone to a local dairy. So right. I know we really do look at that. We you take do. it very seriously, and we love to be able to showcase that with our viewers mm -hmm. and with our parents so they know. Right, right, and which is fine because with the school system, again, because it is such a large school system, we know you cannot purchase all the product within within Maryland, just because Maryland land mass is so small. So yeah, some of the school systems have to, you know, expand it to go to the surrounding state. Of course, we're partial, and we want you to see in Maryland, but we understand, you know, you can only do what you can do, and to get the local product as soon as you can, you know, mm -hmm. so be it. So you have to go outside of the state, just because, yes, we have a large, some of the large scale producers, but in order to meet the needs for Anne Arundel, it's quite large, so. Right. 
and and we could um, request up to 30,000 servings a day which is a lot I mean we did a little bit of math right before the show Mm -hmm. right and we looked at um, we served it was 208,000 pounds so for someone watching today you think that's a lot of pounds of local produce Mm -hmm. but in one slice I guess it was the gala apple Mm -hmm. it was over a million three hundred thousand apples so wow. when you look at the eaches mm-hmm. of what we serve, mm-hmm. it is just, mm-hmm. it's huge. And it, it grows huge. every year, right. which you know because you and I are able mm-hmm. to communicate that and we share the statistics. Right, exactly. We at one time had zero local produce. Yeah. And now, now look at you. Yeah. So now 208,000 pounds and growing. We, right. um, we offer it all year or whenever mm-hmm. it's readily available to us. Um, obviously, at the growing season. Right, right. You know, and the, you could do, you know, apples you could put into cold storage. And yes, we have some farmers who are trying to um, extend their seasons because we have the hydroponic lettuce now. And now we have hydroponic cucumbers, which I just found out, and wow. tomatoes. But then again, your price points. Obviously, you have to look at your price points and what the school system can afford versus, you know, what how else you can buy it and then I need to commend you for working with your distributor because I know in order for a distributor to be able to identify the products of local it takes a major feat so your spreadsheet is really quite impressive and I do share it around with other people saying look at what Anne Arundel County is doing they're getting their distributor to identify what farms Mm-hmm. and what state is coming from. And we actually get this. So not only do we get um, something, and you know, I guess this is just like one of the reports that comes through. So it mm-hmm. lists all of our items, how much pounds, and from exactly. the local growers. So we're right. able to educate the students every mm-hmm. day. Right. Um, it came from Calora Farms. It came mm-hmm. from Arnold Farms. Mm-hmm. So we right away say, this is the Maryland farmer that right. just brought this to you. Exactly. So we love it. We had the opportunity um, a few years ago to sit at a farmer's table in their mm-hmm. house and say, what could you grow for mm-hmm. Anne Arundel County? How could we really make, right. you know, how could you grow and harvest something mm-hmm. for us that we know we're going to serve and put on our menu every day, awesome. which is really that connection for mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. was priceless as well. And I think that really helped us connect with um, the distribution point, which That's is great. Um, key for us mm-hmm. because we have so many locations. You do. We can't have a farmer um, deliver to 46 different no. schools. And the farmer doesn't want to do that either because, you know, it's time and money for them to be delivering to 46 different schools because your system and how it's set up because you service your 100 and some schools. That's a lot of schools. And mm-hmm. then, for you know, that's time and money out of the farmer's day to deliver all those schools. So, no, I don't think they want to do it. And that's why the distribution system works. Right. And we want to well. be helpful to that farmer and really have them prosper and be a successful community exactly. member exactly. Um, in conjunction with us. Right. And that's another thing about the Farm to School program, because farmers live in the communities too, and they're passionate about what they do, and they want to see their product into the school lunches, because they're also part of the community. We only have about a minute left, and if we could talk real briefly just about a cookout Mm -hmm. um, that happens. And it happens every year, and it's just a showcase of Maryland farmers, and it's all the great work that you do at the Maryland State Department of Agriculture. Great. Can you just share a little bit about that? Sure. The, it's the Governor's Buy Local Cookout. We've had it every year, well, for seven years now already. And so the whole premise behind it is to showcase the local product during the summer months. And so it's, it happens during the Buy Local Challenge, which is in July. And the idea behind the cookout is that we have the local chefs working with the local farmers, and they have create teams of you know, of the culinaries and the producers. And when they create this product, um, these wonderful recipes, and then we showcase it on the grounds of the governor's house. And it's just a wonderful event. Now, I had the opportunity to attend this year, mm-hmm. and again, I can't commend you. Um, Thank you. It, it was fantastic to taste that local product, to have the farmer there, to have the business or the uh, mm-hmm. group of individuals who put the recipe together. It was priceless. And then you got a cookbook. Yes, the cookbook. The cookbook, <laughs> was the, that was like the, the perfect ending because you now can go home and you can try to prepare that at home with the same ingredients. Exactly. And hopefully even go to that same farmer if you right. could. Right, or the restaurant. And we try to we stress easy because we know we're all busy and we don't have time. And so that's what we ask. You know, if you're going to submit a recipe, make it easy so that someone can, t- you know, make it at home. That's great. Well, thank you so much, for Karen, for coming in today. Um, clearly, you're a great partner to Anne Arundel County yeah. Public Schools. Um, and I think the work that you do for the state is just instrumental in having students be successful in school. Well, thank you, Jody. It's a pleasure to be here. And th- I'm glad we were able to have this great partnership. Thank you. As you can see, the Maryland State Department of Agriculture is key to all local school systems, not only us here in Anne Arundel County. Karen and I work together on many different initiatives, and we have her in in our school on 
many occasions at many different events, tasting of the rainbows, tasting of the greens, and just sometimes to come and have lunch with her daughter. So if you're one of the parents out there watching today, come in and have lunch with your son or daughter. See what they eat for school lunch, or at least ask the question every night, what fruit or vegetable did you have today at school lunch? If you have any questions or comments regarding the school meals program, please call me at 410-222-5900. Thanks again for watching Food for Thought, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.